guys, welcome back to The Biblical Couple, where we help you walk with God in your marriage. And today we are discussing seven things we wish we knew before we got married. One of those things relates to flatulence. But women don't fart, because women are unicorns. That's one of the things I wish I knew. Yeah. Just kidding. Okay, it's not about flatulence at all. Um, for the actual seven things, listen in. Let's get started. The first thing that we wish we knew before we got married was to commit as much learning as possible to our memories during premarital counseling. And this hunger for wisdom is embodied super well by Proverbs 2, 1 through 5, where it says, My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commandments within you, make your ear attentive to wisdom, incline your heart to understanding. For if you cry for discernment, lift your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will discern the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. Yes, so premarital counseling. In premarital counseling, there's a lot, a lot that you get to learn and that's awesome. Sometimes it becomes more of a theoretical thing though. And it's really important to be able to take those theoretical principles and ideas into practice. And one of those things that I wish I kept practicing and kept applying, especially during the first year of marriage, was being able to solidify that habit of thinking scripturally and praying scripturally. So for instance, you know, a wife could be thinking, oh my goodness, like I'm so mad at my husband, how can you do this to me, this is so hard, versus this situation is difficult, Lord, but I know that by your grace we'll be able to get through this, and I know that you're working this out for good, and I can choose to love my husband. That is such a great point. Your future self will truly thank you so much for taking your present learning seriously, and that goes for all of our Christian life. Yep. But if you don't have prenatal counseling, go get that counseling in your church. Yes, make sure that you and your spouse or your spouse-to-be are at a Bible-believing church that takes God's glory seriously and teaches from the Bible sound doctrine and enroll yourself in the premarital counseling program. And even if your church doesn't have a premarital counseling program, go find godly married couples that are on fire for the Lord and go get accountability and wisdom from them. We actually have a few books that we went through ourselves during premarital counseling. We will link those below for you guys in the description box. And if you are in San Diego, which we are in currently, uh, our church is called Redeemer's Grace Church, residing in San Diego, and our marriage fellowship is called Rock Solid Marriage Fellowship. We will link those websites below in the description box as well. The second thing that we wish we knew before we got married was that our vision starts now. So your vision is your day-to-day -day plan for how you're going to contribute to Christ's church. So what is that plan? That's something that you should be thinking about when you're dating. Uh, maybe it's a plan that shifts and changes, sure, but at least you're thinking about it. And when you're engaged, you're thinking about it even more seriously. And when you're married, for sure, that's something that, that's driving you in your relationship. It's not something that you wanna just start thinking about once your honeymoon period is over, because this is the foundation of your Christian purpose, and therefore, the foundation of your Christian marriage's purpose. And two people, um, that we really esteem and look up to in the New Testament are Priscilla and Aquila, and they give a really good example for us in this. Romans 16, verses three to four. And that says, Greet Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who for my life risk their own necks, to whom not only do I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Amen, exactly. Priscilla and Aquila, esteemed by the Apostle Paul because they sacrificed even up to their own lives, risking their own necks for the purpose of the gospel so that all the, the church of the Gentiles uh, could praise God for these two. We definitely want to be a married couple like that and we hope that you have that vision as well. So for example, during the first year of our marriage, when we were setting up our logistics, getting used to living together, uh, Joanna had some various opportunities to serve in the ministries in our church. And when the ministry opportunities started to 
grow and increase, I started to get protective over her time thinking, oh man, you know, we got to focus on our thing. And that is valid and there's a time and place for that. But at the same time, what I should have done was remember, okay, what's our vision? What's our vision for how we're going to contribute to Christ Church and making sure that she can thrive not only in our home life, but thriving in our ambition together to serve the Lord. And the third thing we wish we knew before we got married was that old habits die hard. Like yes, they me do. being cool and Shang being dorky. She put that line in the script when she was really, really tired. So you can see <laughs> how geeky her humor is. No, in, in he's actuality, the one I'm the one who's very, very cool. Um, but yeah, old habits die hard. And there is one very clear example of that. We fell asleep on the couch a lot. Uh, obviously not on purpose. We would, I don't know, be working on the computer or something. And um, I don't remember who would fall asleep first. Was it really me? Probably. No, but now it's him. It's All right, whatever. Um, what, <laughs> whatever the case is, I probably was the one who woke up first. And that's the case still now. We called the couch the couch of despond. After Pilgrim's Progress, <laughs> there's the, uh, what is it? The swamp of the despond. Slough. The, the slough of despond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our couch, our love seat, first year is so, so comfortable. But yeah, that habit is super, super hard to break. Like even now, after Joanna's finished breastfeeding, we're just like, oh, the super couch tired. is so comfortable. Like, oh man. And then and boom, then, when we wake up at like yeah. 2 or 3 a.m. And we're just like, oh, we did it again. And, and then we're like, Brushing our teeth super late, and you know, it's just it's just not not good for for sleep schedule and all that. But yeah. but just know that the habits that you set up in your first year, those things last. So you want to set up good habits from the beginning. Amen. Yep. Yeah, don't make your couch the couch of despond. Exactly. Speaking of establishing good foundations, the fourth thing that we wish we knew was to establish solid family traditions. That's something that we're still trying to work on uh, because sometimes we forget the dates of the things that we had established, but it is really, really important uh, just to be able to reflect and remember God's goodness to us in our family year after year. And you can see um, this principle in Joshua 4 verse 6 and 7 when God commands Joshua to take up 12 stones from the bed of the Jordan River to remind Israel that God had stopped the Jordan River up so that Israel could cross and then enter into the promised land for conquest. Um, it says in verses 6 to 7 of Joshua 4, let this be a sign among you so that when your children ask later saying, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall say to them, because the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, when it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So the children are asking, what do these stones mean, right? It's like a family tradition. They see it, you know, they see it after year after year, and they ask, like, what does it mean to you? And they get to reflect on God's goodness. One example of a tradition that we really like is on August 12th, we go to Brugger's Bagels to get bagel sandwiches because that's the date that God had given me uh, my most recent job, which was an amazing providence to us, uh, which enabled us to be able to have a couple of kiddos. So praise God for that. Establish those family traditions. The fifth thing we wish we knew before we got married is that life gets busier and that's a good thing. And to add on to that, life gets busier, but you also be more tired. And that's also a good thing. It's, it's okay to be tired, it's actually normal because it would be weird if you had less responsibility over time instead of more responsibility because God wants you to work and he instituted that in the beginning of Genesis and so it would be weird to not be busy and tired. That is a super fantastic point because I feel like um, when I hear people say, oh, I'm just so tired, it seems like from what they're saying that it's something that's very alien and it's something that they think, okay, this is a problem we got to make sure that we're not tired at all. And of course, you know, rest is necessary, but just understanding that being tired is a good thing. That 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 is a hint that you've worked hard for the Lord and that you're able to contribute to something good and bigger than yourself um, by exerting this energy that God's given you. Exactly. And we think about Paul in 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8, when he talks about how he poured out his life as an offering. He's just reflecting on his past life and ministry to the Lord talking, it's, well, not verbally talking, but writing this letter to Timothy, and this is what he said. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the course, I have kept the faith. 
In the future, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. The sixth thing that we wish we knew before we got married was that your sex drive changes over time. Mm -hmm. Some people might be coming in expecting, all right, as soon as we get married, and all the way through V8 engine, just like boom, 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 go, 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 like 1,000 horsepower or something like that. Or some of you might be thinking like, oh man, like sex drive, that's, I don't really have that. That's not really something that, that characterizes me. Um, but just understand that your sex drive, it ebbs and flows through various seasons of life. Yes, and speaking of seasons of life, you know, when I was pregnant, Sometimes my sex drive was low and, and you know, we had to work through that and it was okay. We learned to love each other through that and, and choose to love each other. And even with postpartum, right? Like hormones going up and down, it's just, you know, that's also another thing that we had to work through as well. Exactly, yeah, it's just totally understandable, right? So if your wife is pregnant and she's becoming more and more round and looking more and more like a kiwi, um, you know, naturally those things are uncomfortable and that is totally understandable. That is absolutely something that we can work through through communication. Mm -hmm. And the postpartum, the hormones are, are shifting and changing and going crazy. And again, that's something that we can talk through. Yes, there may be some challenges in various seasons, but just understanding that the undergirding, the foundation of selfless love never changes because our God's selfless love never changes and we can reflect that to one another. Mm -hmm. We have a Rowie it's here. Rowie. Say hi, Rui. He's a little burrito. We call him burrito. <laughs> Anyways, the seventh thing and the final thing that we wish we knew before we got married was that spiritual decay happens very subtly. Uh, we like to think that we are spiritual dynamos. We like to think that we are stalwarts who are immovable by ourselves and don't realize how quickly that apathy and that ambition for the Lord, that adoration of the Lord, worship of the Lord, that love of the Lord starts to dissipate. And we see that in Hebrews 3 verses 12 to 13, where it says, Take care, brethren, that there not be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. But encourage one another day after day, as long as it is still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Look at that encouragement. As long as it's called today, mm -hmm. you're to encourage one another. And from what I've seen on my calendar, today is called today. That is, that was really, I'm sorry, that was really dorky. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, it is so key that we encourage each other and stay on top of our game, being spiritually alert, because we're, otherwise we're gonna be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. That sin is crouching at our door waiting to tempt us and to take a dig at our spiritual strength. Mm -hmm. And that's so key in our marriage to protect our spiritual disciplines, protect our fire for the Lord as a married couple. Yeah, and especially for mothers, if you are a mother, you know how busy the day can get. And so it's really, really important to be able to wake up before everyone else does in the house so that you can spend that time in the word, meditating on the word, drawing strength from the Lord in the word and prayer. And a really good example of this is Susanna Wesley. You might know her, know of her. She's not alive anymore. She's with the Lord. That's great. But anyway, <laughs> Susanna Wesley, who was the mother of John and Charles Wesley, theologian and hymn writer respectively, she was the mother of 11 kids. We think today that two or three kids is like, Plenty, right? But 11 kids, that's a lot. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of kids running around really crazy days. But when she felt her need to go to the Lord in prayer, and when she went to prayer, she would put her apron over her head, which is really admirable and, and just something that I look up to and I hope to do. Not literally putting an apron over my head. Maybe. If, I don't know. But yes, mothers, make sure you protect your spiritual disciplines and don't let that spiritual decay happen. Husbands, wives, really practical thing you can make sure that you do is to get your morning devotionals okay. in, or at least started in the morning. You can read more in the later parts of the day, but start it off right. And then husbands, wives, you can share with each other about what you learned. How did you cherish God more today? 
Those are the seven things that we wish we knew. Now you know them. Hopefully it's super helpful and encouraging. Let us know in the comments below if you have another thing that you wish you knew or one of those seven things that was particularly encouraging to you. Can't wait to see you guys in our future videos and we will see you then. And Rowie says bye. You can't see his arms waving. Ah, you see his hand is right there. Wow, look at his hand apart from his body. All right, see you guys later. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>